Right, welcome back. So we've seen now in the previous video that when we log in a user, that user won't stay logged in unless we do something else. So we need to run this one that says check if the user logged in or not. Okay, so I'm going to change this back to an OK so that the app will then uh, basically do the correct thing and not just say an O there. Right, so we can go back to the back end as user service and we can call a function that's called isValidLogin that will pass back a value that will be a boolean. So I'm going to call this uh, valid login, and let's set this equal to await. And because of the await keyword, the function must be asynchronous. So we're going to say await backendless dot user service again. In the user service, there is a is valid login function. And that is valid login function, if you hover over it, it doesn't give us any information. But what this will do is it will tell us whether the user that's currently logging still has a valid login token. So I'm going to say is valid login. And again, like all the previous ones, we can have that on error there. Let me just remove this virtual device for now. Okay, let's end it off. And I will replace this part with just an opening and a closing brace. Okay, so if there is an error, we can again change that result. So we're going to say result equals error dot to string. Right, so this seems easy. Well, is it a valid login? Yes or no. If it is, we know the user is logged in, we can take him to the to-do screen. But now the problem is this valid login doesn't tell us who is currently logged into your app. So in order to get the user that is valid and currently logged in, we need to do some more. So I'm going to say is if this is a valid login, and you can see it's it returns back a boolean. This is valid login returns in a future boolean that can be null. Okay, so we need to test for that null value. So if the valid login is not equal to null, and at the same time, obviously, that valid login is equal to true. So you can just say and valid login, or you can use the equal sign true there. It's doing exactly the same thing. So if the valid login is not equal to null and we know that it's true, which means the user can now go to the to-do page, we now need to find out who is this user that is currently logged in. In order to do this, we're going to have to get the current user object ID. Now, in order to get the current user object ID, we're going to go to await backendless dot user service again dot logged in user. Now this logged in user function you can see returns back a future string that can also be null and that will contain the current user object ID. Again like everything else there can be an error so we will need to catch that error. I'm going to use just an opening and closing brace again. I'm going to set my result to error dot to string. Right, so now for this if statement, let's just quickly do the else while it's still easy to do it, where you can still see all the brackets. So for the else, we will just set the result as equal to, let's say, not okay. So let's just go through this again. If the valid, if the valid login is not equal to null and it is a valid login. So the other option will be it's either null or it's false. So in either case, the result must be not okay and we do not want to do anything else then. We will take him back to the login screen. Okay, so we will test for this not okay value later on. So we're going to have it something that's easy to test. So I'm just going to use it as not okay. Okay, so this is the if statement then. We've got the current object or the user object ID, but that doesn't help us yet because from the current user object ID, we do not know who is the user that's currently logged in. So we need to get that user with this specific user object ID. So again, we're going to check because this object ID can be null, it's nullable. We need to check if it is null or not. So if the current user object ID is not equal to null, then we know we've got an actual user that is logged in. So at this stage, we've got the user object ID of the person that's logged in. So let's just have a look at the user's table quickly. So this object ID is the one that we have here. It will be one of these two object IDs. And if you look at these object IDs, we need to now get the user or the users here according to their object ID. And when we get data back from backenders, it always comes back as a map 
was JSON data. So just keep that in mind while we are coding the next part. Right, so back in Visual Studio Code, we know that the current user object ID is not equal to null. So we're going to get back a map now. So that map is dynamic and dynamic for both the key and the value. It could be anything. That's how it returns back. And it can also be null, so it must be nullable. Let's call this one the map of the current user. That's the, basically the current user's data. And in order to get it, we're going to call await backendless dot data. So now we're working in a specific table dot of. What is the table name? Well, the table name must be exactly the same spelling, and that will be users. For backendless, I like to use the double quotation marks there, as they sometimes give some problems with the single quotations. So it's going to be a wait backendless dot data dot of in the users table. Why is it users? So just have a look at your table name there, exactly the same spelling, users. And then we're going to say dot, and you're going to see if you start typing find, there's find by ID. So we're going to call find by ID. The ID will be this current user object ID, and then we can also handle the error. So let me just add a semicolon there so everything goes readable. Okay. So we're going to get a map of the current user. That map will be uh, the key and the value will be dynamic. We go to backendless.data, go to the data table called users, find the specific user by its ID. There's the current user object ID. And then if there's an error, this will happen. So let's just go and add the opening and closing brace again and set the result to error.toString. Right, so now we actually have the current user in the form of a map. And now we need to convert that map back to something that we can use inside of our app. So we're going to test first. If this map of current user is not equal to null, because it can also be null, like we've seen there. So if the map of the current user, which means the current user's data, something went wrong, we couldn't get it, it's null. If So if it's not null, we're going to set the current user to this user now. So how do we get this user? Luckily, the class called back endless user. If you put a dot there, you can see that they also have this from JSON function like we have in our to do class. OK, so this from JSON will then convert that. If you hover over it, it will convert it to a back endless user. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, so where's the JSON data? Well, it is this map of current user. And at this stage, because we changed that value, we will also notify any listeners that's listening for this current user. Okay, so back in this user has got a function called from JSON, which converts a JSON file or a map in our case to a back in this user. And current user at the top is declared as a back in this user. So now we have the current user or the user that's currently logged in and we can continue with the app. Okay, so if the map of the current user is not equal to null, then we have this. But there's also an else. The else part there will be setting the result as equal to not okay again. So remember, we will test for that. And then even for this null one there, okay, we've got the else. That one is fine. Let me just see. And then if we go to this one, which is, okay, that is that bracket. If we go to this one, it's that one. So let's just add the else here as well, where we can set the result equal to not okay. Right, so if it's not okay, we will take him back to the login screen. Okay, so this check if user logged in, the first thing we did was to check if there is a valid login. If there is a valid login, we check if it's true, then we get the current user's object ID by calling login user. We get the object ID. We check if the object ID is not null. If it is not null, we can go and get a map of the current user or the JSON data of the current user by going to the specific table and finding it by that ID that we corrected now. If that map of the current user is then not equal to null, which means there is some data, we now have our current user by converting that JSON back to a back endless user and saving it in our variable called current user. If anything went wrong, we will either have not okay or we will have a specific error. So there's three things we can test for. We can test for okay, everything is fine. 
not OK, so OK, we will take him to the to-do page. If it's not OK, we will take him to the login page. If an error occurred, we will show him a snack bar that tells him what error occurred. OK, so now let's go back to our init dot dot. So you'll remember in our init dot dot, this is actually where we call that check if user logged in. So we initialize our back in this app. We run this, check if the user logged in. So this happens right at the start of your application while your loading screen is still loading. So that loading screen is on. Then we get check if user logged in. That will do everything we've done now. It will go through all of these steps to check if the user is currently logged in and it will send back OK or not. So let's just go back to init. So we can see there, if the result is OK, we take the user to the to-do page. If the result is not OK, we take him to the login page. So what you could have done here also is to check for the not OK here, then just take him to the login page. And then if there is, if it's not OK or not OK, then you can show a specific message if you wanted to. I did not add that here. But in any case, if there is some sort of error that occurs, then you would rather take the user back to the login screen. So let's see if this works now. So I'm going to rerun this application now. And you can see by just rerunning this application, it picks up that there's a user that's previously logged in and it takes you to the to-do page. Now, obviously nothing on this to-do page is working yet because that's something we still need to do. So now we are keeping the user logged in by rerunning the app. It shows the loading screen and it goes back to the currently logged in user. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.